Catfish, dude, what's with the hat, man? <laughs> Did you have another? What happened to the cowboy hat? Oh, really? You're modeling now? Give me a break. Are you serious? You're mo you're a catfish and you're a model with different hats. Okay, you're modeling hat wear. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, you're looking kind of chubby. You might, you know, you might want to lose a few pounds. Anyway, are you still doing your disappearing acting? Is that still a thing that's going on? Yeah? Oh. <laughs> it's still sensitive, huh? Hey, I am Mr. Wara. Welcome to another math video, my friends. Hey, this is a third and final video of Chapter 2, the review test that you have for Go Math. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. See, it's becoming my new thing. I don't know. It's just stuck in my head. <laughs> Help! No. Anyway, let's get started. We're looking at Number 14. Okay, the problem says, Russ and Vicky are trying to solve this problem. But there are 146... Okay, is that, that, that's too much, isn't it? There are 146 students taking buses to the museum. If each bus holds 24 students, how many buses will they need? And then it says, Russ says the students need six buses. Vicky says they need seven. Hmm, interesting. She respectfully disagrees with Russ. Who is correct? Explain your reasoning. We have, like, it looks like to me, like a whole quantity, uh, a number that we're trying to put into equal groups. You guessed it, 146 students. Now, the fact that they're going to the museum, kind of immaterial. However, it is important, though, that we know that the bus holds 24 students. Yes, that's important because that's letting us be our divisor here, right? And then we'll find out how many buses they're going to need. All right, so I'm seeing 146 divided by 24. Yeah, looking at this here, ooh, not so nice because we have the 24 won't go into the Vordine. So 24 is only going to go into the 146. But you know, this is an opportunity for me to teach you one of Mr. Warris math tricks. That's right. I should have like a bell dinging, okay? It's really important you focus right now. Let's see if this makes sense to you. When I look at this divisor, whoop, that was an accident. Sorry. Oh, oh, no. Hey. Oh, Mr. Wara. All right, let me fix that. Good as new. Okay, so when I look at a divisor that has the tens digit here that's larger than one, there's a little trick that you can use that will work. Because really what this number is, is about 20. And this number here, if you look at it, is about 14 tens. So rather than when you get into division, and you'll see this will come in handy later, when you're trying to put this divisor into that dividend, sometimes the number gets so large that you find yourself going, okay, let me try 24 times three. Oh no, it doesn't work, 24 times four. And you go on and on and on like that energizer bunny. It's too much. So a nice easy way is say, hey, how many times would two go into 14 about. We can see it's going to go in there seven times. But because this number is a little bit larger than 20, I'm going to say six. So let's see what happens if we do 24 times six. It may or may not work. Let's see. I do that. I get 24. I carry the 212. Ooh, look at that. Is that for real? 144? You mean Mr. War's trick finally worked on a video? Okay. First for everything. So 24 times six is 144. I'm just double checking my work. Yes. Okay. Nothing like getting a student to post there on my YouTube channel saying, Mr. War, you made a mistake. Oh, no. Okay, so that 6 is actually going into that large number, though, not 14. All right, because we were doing the whole thing. And that leaves us with 2. So what I'm seeing here, then, is I'm seeing that Russ said you need 6 buses. Yeah, there's your 6. But Vicky said you need 7. So this is one of those problems that you may, you may recall. I use that word a lot. Recall from a previous math video how sometimes the quotient, we take the quotient for what it is, sometimes we need to add one, sometimes we put it into a fraction, but in this case, because we're talking about people, you couldn't possibly do it because you'd have two people left over, two people that would not get on a bus. 
That's basically what this problem would say. We would be able to handle 144 of you with six buses, but those two people, they would be sitting on the side of the road. And, you know, that's that's just not right. So anyway, we will make sure that they get on a bus. So I'm going to do plus one, meaning seven buses. Vicky, sorry, I am with you. And so I said, who's correct? So I'm going to say Vicky is correct. So explain your reasoning. I kind of already explained it. So let me go just go ahead and write my notes and maybe I'll read them to you. Well, there you go. Let's go down. Oh, it's more of this. Oh, get out. What's this? Oh, my God. Can you see that? Oh, my goodness. Buddy, what are you doing? Really? You got an endorsement from a cola company? Really? You know, that's... I've just been a bad, it's been me, isn't it? I've bad influence on you. You don't want to drink soda. Anyway, you know, your modeling career is not going to last very long doing that. Okay, not good for you, my friend. Yep. Yeah? Okay. Oh, I thought you would do that disappearing thing. Okay. Hey, those guys don't stay around long, do they? They just take off. Okay, now, it says write the letter for each quick picture under the division problem it represents. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, kind of easy, don't you think? Oh, I'll think so. Just a letter. Okay. Want to follow my instructions? Just a letter. Now, I have 156 divided by 12 equals 13. And you see we have a 10 here. Okay. Which means we have 10. Remember, we have kind of two more. It looks like two more rows. And then here we have 10, but we have two more. So, we have like a 12 here. So what we have here is we have 10 rows of 12. And then over here, it looks like we have two more groups of 12. So when I look at this, I, I see this is 12 times 12. Over here, I have a 12 times 12. Yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to give you A, at least for right now. Although I leave the option open to get out my eraser if necessary. All right, here, same thing. I have 10. I have plus, it looks like three more complete groups. Over here, I have 10 and I have 12. Okay, so I have 10 groups of 12 here and then three groups of 12. Well, 12 groups of, thir there you go. You see how we're multiplying? Yeah, that looks at that one right there. Oh my goodness, that should be B. Now, I could just put C for that one, but I really should check, shouldn't I? Yeah, what do we have here? Well, we have 10 rows of one, two, three, four. Oh my goodness, we have 14. So we have 10 rows of 14 plus two more rows of looks like 10 yes of 14 exactly there you go yes 14 12 i like it all right that's my final answer ding oh my goodness you just keep reappearing what is this now what do you have like uh you have another hat oh is this part of that whole mop and you're drinking milk now what Oh, okay. So one of the modeling agencies, they realized that they didn't want to keep you hired on unless you started drinking milk. Smart. See, I knew it. You'd come around. It's your bread and butter. You need this job. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of the catfish going, boy, the way he sports that top cap makes me want to get one for myself. But okay. You still have your little cloaking device? <laughs> I guess he answered my question, huh? He didn't even have to tell me. All right. Number 16. It says, Steve is buying apples for the fifth grade. Each bag holds 12 apples. If there are 75 students total, how many bags of apples will Steve need to buy if he wants to give one apple to each student? Let's go over some information again as we do our little reread, right? First thing is, he's buying apples for the fifth grade. Okay, not the most pertinent information that we need right now. But the fact that each bag holds 12 apples is really important. That's giving us kind of an equal group. And letting us know that at least each bag has that many in there. And then it says, if there's 75 students total, how many bags of apples will Steve need to buy if he wants to give one apple to each student? So we have 75 students. I'm going to do all this work over here. 75, all right? And he wants each student get to get one. So if you start buying bags, he's going to buy the bags. He's going to get 12 apples in each bag. Well, 12, that's a nice number, right? 72. If you know you're 12, 12 times 6, and then 72. And I have with 3 left over. Sounds great, right? We're going to buy 6 bags. 
that's not going to be enough because the problem is there's 75 students. So if he bought six bags, he would only end up with 72 apples. So he's going to have to, yeah, buy one more bag. No other way around it. So the answer would be seven bags. This is that situation where we have the quotient. We need to add one plus one. Next problem. Let's see. Rashid needs to save $231 to earn money. He plans to wash cars and charge $12 per car. Write two estimates Rashid could use to determine how many cars he needs to wash. Hmm, two estimates. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Man, yeah, what be taking is 231, and I'm going to divide that by the $12. And because I'm doing estimates, I'm probably going to want to round that off as $10. Would probably work really, really well with 230. So here we would have 23 cars. And that's one, one choice there. One estimate. Let me think of the other. Oh, okay, so I see this one here. So if we had 12 and just left the 12, we could actually turn that into 240. So let's do that one. Let me just draw a line separating that. So we're doing estimates now. So now I'm going to do 240, and I'm going to just leave the 12. Normally, you would want to round the 12. And the reason why we're not going to round the 12 here is because 12 is so compatible with 24, and that's really, really close. And of course, then that's going to be 20 cars. So if you did 20 cars, at $12 a car, he's going to be able to raise $240. Okay, that number seems like the better estimate because it ensures that he's going to have the money he's looking for, $231, right? Because he's going to end up having $240. But he actually is washing a few less cars. Where if he were to estimate this at 10, and then this is just shy of his actual amount that he's trying to raise, he would have to do 23 cars. So it's a difference of three cars. So let me put those two estimates down anyway. There we go. Nice. We're just moving along. We're getting near the end. This is the last problem, I think. We're getting close. It says Paula has a dog that weighs three times as much as Carla's dog. The total weight of the dogs is 48 pounds. How much does Paula's dog weigh? Draw a diagram to find the weight of Paula's dog. Um, this is, I could see where it would be a challenging problem. One amount is being compared to the other amount. We have three times as much, okay, being compared to the weight of Paula's dog to Carla's dog. So that's significant because we know that three times does mean like multiply by three. So if we could just determine what Carla's dog's weight is, uh, that would be a huge help. We don't really have that. But in my mind, I just kind of want to write, kind of let it write, let, Let's try to write an equation, even if it's in words. Maybe this will help us set up a picture. Carla's dog has a weight. Okay, we don't know what that is. Okay, it's just an unknown. I could use a variable too, but I'm trying to avoid that. That's Carla's dog. Should I put CD in there? Carla's dog, okay? Now, plus, now we have Paula's dog is three times as much. So whatever Carla's is, and we're just going to put a CD in there, it's going to be times three. The total weight of the dogs together is going to equal 48 pounds. Okay, and I'm just writing this out so you can kind of see what the problem is asking us to do. And what we need to find out, of course, is Paula's uh, dog's weight. What, what's the weight of her dog? Draw a diagram to find the weight of Paula's dog. Well, here's maybe one option. Let's think of it this way. Let's just use pictures, because it does say draw a diagram. So if we were to draw a picture, we could draw a picture of, let's just call this Carla's dog. Okay, this one box. Okay, and let's also say that since we know Paula's dog is three times as much, could we draw three squares and just label this one Paula's dog? And I'm just going to draw two more. Make sense? Hers is three times that. So if whatever Carla's dog's weight is, Paula's dog is going to be that, but it's going to be three times that amount. So I'm just drawing three squares three squares to show that. And then maybe here, this would kind of like think of it all equaling, right? It's going to equal 48 pounds. What are we saying here? Well, in essence, these are all the same. When I, when I drew these squares, they're to be the same. I mean, this square is equal to this square, okay? The first square there is equal to that square. So they're all the same quantity. Since that's the case, then couldn't we say, couldn't we take 48 then and divide it by 
four, since we have four of those boxes, they're, they're all the same. We don't know what one box is yet, but we will as you're looking. Now, 48 divided by 4, you may already know, is 12. Well, that means each box is 12. So now we can write 12 inside each of the boxes. Are we good? We good? Good, good. So Carlos' dog is 12 pounds. And that means that Paula's dog is going to be three times that. So we just come over here and say 12. I know you guys already know that. 12 times 3. Right, it's going to be 36 pounds. 36 pounds is Paula's dog's weight and Carlos' dog is 12. And I guess we could write those words down so that we, sorry, equation here. So we definitely know that so Carla's weighs 12, and I'm going to use the abbreviation for pounds. Paula's dog weighs 36 pounds. It says Dylan estimates the first digit in the quotient. And here we go. Okay. It says Dylan's estimate is too high or too low. If we're doing just straight division, 46 can't go into 3. It can't go into 36, so he's good there. But then he said 6 into 366. Now we could go ahead and multiply these through and determine whether the remainder is going to be larger than the divisor. That's one way we could solve it. So why don't we just go ahead and do that way? Take 46 times 6. That's 36 where we carry the 3. We're going to add that. We have 6 times 4, which is 24, plus 3, which is 27. So we have 276. So now if we go ahead and take our 366, subtract our 276. Here we get 0. have to regroup here. 16 minus 7, I don't know, looks like 9. And 90 is larger than 46. Therefore, his estimate was you can take one more 46 out. Double it, 12, 8, 9, I could do two, could do one more. Okay, in fact, one more would have given him just for fun. Let's see, we're doing 46, 12, carry the 1, 11, 12, carry the 1, I think 322. Hey, my friends, I know you're hearing that music jamming. Ooh, yeah, uh -huh. gets me in the groove. Hey, it's come to an end. That's right, with our video. It was fun. It was real. It wasn't real fun. No, it was really fun, Mr. War. <laughs> hey, you guys, live long and prosper.